On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully, I'll demonstrate how to enhance a digital painting created in Adobe Firefly by expanding its size and incorporating additional elements into the image. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. Thanks for joining me again today. Today, I'm going to take this image. It's just a square 1024 by 1024 image, and I created it using Adobe Firefly. For my Firefly prompt, I used mountains, foothills, lake, and foreground, and I used the style of art and acrylic painting. And then I chose this image right here. So it's just that simple. And then I downloaded that image and then I opened it up here inside of Photoshop. And now we can get started. I'm starting out here with a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. And now I'm gonna use my crop tool to expand this canvas. Now this is very important. You see this lock right here? You wanna left click on the lock and that will unlock the layer. Because if you don't do that, when you go to increase the size of this canvas with the crop tool, things will not work right for you. So that's important. So don't forget to unlock that layer. Now let's go ahead and click on the crop tool. And if you'll look up here in the Photoshop menu area for the crop tool, this is a drop down. Let me click this. You have different aspect ratios that you can use in here. I'm using width by height by resolution. And you'll notice I don't have any numbers in here. If you have numbers in here, you can just click clear and that'll clear those out. And that'll let you do a free form crop. Now I'm going to take the right side and drag this out. Left click and drag to somewhere right around there. And on the left side, I'll do the same thing. I'll left click and drag out to maybe somewhere right around here. And I want to extend the bottom. So I'm going to click and drag this down to maybe somewhere right around in there. And maybe I'll leave the top the way it is. I won't add any more sky to this image. So I'll leave it just like this. And we can go ahead and click the check here. And that'll accept that crop. But you'll notice I have transparent pixels, which is very important. If I wouldn't have unlocked this layer, I would have maybe like a, a white in this area or black. And then when you go to use your generative fill, you'll have issues, you'll have problems. So don't forget to unlock that. You want to make sure you have transparency here. And you can tell by the checkerboard pattern that this is transparent. And now we'll use generative fill to expand this canvas. So here's another tip for you. And I think I showed this to you in one of my recent videos, whenever you want to use generative fill. Click on this uh, marquee tool here, and you'll notice under style, right now it's on normal. Let's go to fixed size, and you'll notice I have for width, you can just type in here, I have 1024 pixels and the height of 1024 pixels because that is the resolution that generative fill works with, at least now at this point. So now that's gonna be a fixed size. So if I click anywhere right here, you can see there's my box. And that's a 1024 by 1024 pixel box, okay? So if I come here, like I'll take the edge right here and you want to let this overlap a little bit here, but you see, I'm just dragging this outside of the canvas. I'm letting it uh, align itself at the top. And then on the left side, I'm overlapping it, but I have 1024 pixels from here to here. And it doesn't matter here as much because I'm definitely under 1024 this way. So now I can just click on generative fill and click generate and give it a few seconds and it'll go ahead and fill that in. Uh, and then we'll get three different uh, images that we can pick from and it's almost done. I won't make you wait all the time for this, but this will show you about how long it takes. It's about 15 to 20 seconds and there you go. It fills it in. So there's my first, let's call these variations because that's what they're called. It says variations right there. So there's variation one, here's variation two, and here is three. And so what if you like one, just click on it and that'll be the one that you choose. Let's go back to one. I kind of I kind of liked one. It's pretty good. I don't like this right here, but we can fix that. It's Photoshop, right? We can click generate again and we can generate three more variations if we want to. But let's stick here for now. And now on the other side here, let's go ahead. We still have the marquee tool and I'm just going to click right here and you can see that marquee tool and you see right there, the little arrow in the center. I can go in the center, click and drag this and you'll notice I'm just going to drag this over. I'm aligning it to the top and to where that image ends on the bottom, right? Like so, and I'll click generative fill again. I'll click generate 
And now we can see that's filled in on the left side. Now remember, you have three variations. So here's her first one. Let's click on the second variation and let's click on the third variation. Let me go back to the first. I think I'll just stick with this first variation. All right, then now for the bottom, I still have the marquee tool, so I'm just gonna click and there's my 1024 by 1024 pixel box. I'll go ahead and align it to the right edge and then just pull down to it's slightly overlapping the image and click generate a fill and generate. Okay, now let's look at our variations. Here's one, here is two. And here is three, boy, I don't know. We can always go back and change these, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and generate three more, so I'm gonna click right here, generate, and it'll generate three more. Let's see if I like these any better. So here's the first one, here is the second one, and here is the third one. Boy, I'll tell you what, I think I like the second one. Let's leave that one there for now. Now, by the way, you can get rid of these. See the three dots right here? You can click these and you can, uh, you can rate these results, which is a good thing to do because that lets Adobe know if their product is working well and they know if they need to tweak things. You can delete anything you want. These images will take up file size if you save these as PSD files. So you may want to get, get rid of things that you know you don't want to use, but just click the... Uh, three dots and then you could just click delete and get rid of anything that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in by using that same technique. So I'm just gonna click once here and all I'm doing again is clicking and dragging this into position. I'll go ahead and fill this in and then I'll fill in that little space. All I need to do is click generate to fill. I'll get right back with you. I'm gonna click generate and see you in a second. All right, so I filled in this area right here, as you can see right there. And I use the second variation and then I filled in that little space right there. You can see that little area right there. I went ahead and filled that in. And this is the first variation. Here is the second variation. And here is the third variation. I think I like the third variation here. So that's what we're going to do. So there you go. So far, so good. Now, whatever we don't like, we can go ahead and fix and we can add to this if we want to. Okay. Remember, I didn't like this little area right here. So to get rid of this, I'm not going to use generative fill. I'm just going to use my new remove tool. And I love this new remove tool. Now I need to get a blank pixel layer. So I'm going to click this button right here. That'll add a blank pixel layer. And I have I don't yet, but I'm going to check on sample all layers and remove after each stroke. That just means as soon as I paint and lift up, it will remove. So I'm just gonna paint over this little section right in here and let it do its little magical trick and look perfect. I love this new remove tool, it's really, really great. And everything looks pretty good except for right up in here. Okay, so let's use, see if we can use this remove tool. We're just gonna paint right along here. Yeah, and look how it just fixes that mountain right up. Here's a little thing here I don't like, I'm gonna get rid of that. Right here, it looks a little funky, so I'll fix that. But isn't that great? I'm just gonna paint down through here and over here once. And I just find this remove tool to be magical. Now let's try something. Let's add a boat in here. Maybe like a little rowboat with a couple people, maybe fishing or something like that. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and I'm gonna start the lasso right around this area in a general size shape of a boat. Now I need to click generative fill. And this is the uh, contextual task bar. And I love this bar. And you can pin it if it's in your way. You can drag it right here, wherever you want it to go. And if you click the three dots, you can click pin bar position, which is nice. And that way it's not always in your way. I'll just type in here, rowboat and fisherman. Let's see what we get. I don't know what we're gonna get here. Let's click generate and see. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. I must have unpinned this. All we need to do is we can click on pin bar position and then we can just drag it up out of here and it'll stay up there. But that's variation one. Here's variation two. Well, that one's pretty cool. Here's variation three. Hmm. I think I like variation two. Let's generate three more and see if we get something we like even better. No, I like that. No, I hate that. That looks hideous. Okay, here's the second one. That looks horrible. Here's the third one. Okay, we got some fishermen. That one's really interesting, but I don't like it. Let's generate three more, see if we can do better. Okay, not bad. I don't know what's happening here, but we can fix this stuff. Here's the second one, another white rowboat, ugly boat. That one I do not like either. I'll tell you what, it's a cross between this one and 
Not this one. That one's not too bad, but I think I like I think I like this one. I'm gonna go with this one. Now remember, you can click on the three dots and you can go ahead and like delete these. Like if you click delete, that's gone. So you can go and delete all these out of here if you want to. So don't forget about that. Because if you save this as a PSD or a TIFF with layers, your file will get really big. I'll grab my remove tool. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe a rudder or a lantern. I don't know, but I don't think it's really needed. So let's put a blank pixel layer above that layer right there. Let me click on my remove tool. Now you can also type J to get that tool. If that was the last tool you had open, that's one of your healing tools. J is the shortcut for that. So let's just paint over this and see if that can be eliminated. And yeah, and there's a little thing right there. We can get rid of that. I think this guy's rod's going that way. So I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller with my left bracket key and get rid of this line right here and this line right here. I don't think we really need it. And there's like a little line right in here. We can get rid of that. There's a little line right there. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm really quite happy with that. Let me see, is there anything else I can add? I gotta tell you, this is a lot of fun and you can keep adding things into here. You know, it's all up to you, whatever you can think up of in your mind, okay? So I think I'm gonna have a man standing right here. I'm gonna go like this, draw a shape like this. The man will be about that size. And let's click on generative fill and I'll type the back of a man. And then we'll click generate and see what we can get here. Okay, there's our first variation. Here's our second variation. Oh, we have like a native. Here's our third variation. That one's not bad. Let's generate three more. I'll click generate. Now let's see what we got. Man, I'm not a real big fan of this guy. He's got two sticks. I don't know what that's all about. Here's the second one. I do like that one a lot. Here is the third one. It's very similar to this one. So not bad, but I kind of like this one here. Something looks funny right here. So let me just lasso around here and let me type in hand and see what we get. Okay, that's kind of like a hand. It doesn't look real good. Let's try this one. That one's not bad. Let's try this one. And that one's pretty believable. There's a little bit of a line right here. I'll use the new Photoshop remove tool again. If the new remove tool was the last tool you used, just type J to get the remove tool. Click on the square with the plus inside. That'll give you a blank pixel layer. I'll just paint across here. And that's not bad. And maybe right here. And that, that looks okay. Kind of looks like a hand. I could keep playing to see if I could get that perfect hand. But at this point, I think I'll pretty much quit. But there's a little bit of a blue line coming down here. So we can just drag this tool right down along that edge and kind of clean that up. Maybe just take this out a little bit. Yeah, see how we can just shape things with that? I can maybe shape this up a little bit like that. That looks pretty good. This looks a little funny here. So let me get rid of this line and this line right here and in here. Things look a little bit bunched up right down here. That looks more like it. I think that looks better. We could put a hat on his head if we wanted to. But at this point, I think we're going to call this one done. But you could keep on going and going and going. Well, there you go, everyone. There's a lot more I could do to this. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what you could do expanding your canvas. And you can add other elements to your image. And it's a lot of fun. It's all up to your imagination. So you're the one that's actually doing the creating here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing!